Let's talk about switch lists in this video. First I want to review a couple of things. Switch configurations consist of the switch IP address and any server router one IP addresses you have. So in this case this is a separate configuration from that. Same with this from that. So in switch lists you have a method of mapping two or more switches in a single operation. This can be done manually or it can be done from the command line by starting the switch list from a task scheduler or something similar. So a switch list consists of two or more switches that you want to map. And how that works is you actually are mapping the switch based on the configuration you've set up. So a configuration is defined as the combination of a switch IP address plus either a server router 1 or server router 2 or both. So you have to first edit the device settings and this goes for both switches and for any other SNMP enabled devices that you want to query using the server router 1 or 2 entries. I like this laser jet. So what you can do is add a new device or edit a device. I'll show you the entries that you get. These are the same entries that you would get by pressing settings over here on this left panel. So you can name it, you can put its IP address in, select the SNMP version that you're going to use. Now this particular LaserJet doesn't accept anything other than version 1 queries. So we put in the community name here for reading it and the write is not used obviously because we're just querying the device. Then you have the ARP table retrieval limit from the device and how long you want to wait between interrogating the device. This minimizes the um, a number of ARP table queries that you're going to be doing. So you, in this case what it means is you query the device and then the next time you can query the device is at least five minutes later. So let's look at a different one. Here is a, our main switch and these are the things that you need to see it in order to get into it. You can delete a device right here pretty easily just by clicking on that. So any switch configuration lists will also have that device removed from it. That's the device settings editor. That is the lowest level. You have to define the, the parameters for talking to the device and that's where you define them. The next level is the switch configuration editor. This is where you define a switch configuration. So you add it here. You first select a switch. You can't type the switch in but you edit and add it from the list same with the server router 1 IPs. These buttons delete anything that is already in there and then you define the other items that are saved as part of the switch configuration whether you want to do these things and whether you want to have a particular MAC address limit per port etc. Once you have your switch configuration defined then you can go ahead and build the switch list. So the first thing we're going to do to create a new switch list is press this button and then look at the options. You have first of all the switch list name so we'll call this one new test one. There's a report that can be shown in your web browser after completing this switch list. There's also an option for saving the results automatically as XML files after each switch mapping and as I mentioned in other videos the XML file contains the switch list IP address plus the time, the Unix time separated by dashes. Then you also have the option of showing individual switch list reports as it executes the list. So you can see the report for one switch then the report for the next. So we're going to add a configuration here. Let's first of all get switch 222. We'll add another. This is our root switch 196 and we'll add one more. We'll possibly try 
230. And then we can organize them by moving them up and down in this manner. So now we'll map the switch list. First we have to select it and highlight it. And you can see the options that we selected here. And you can go back and edit those by double clicking on it and editing it. So now we'll map the switch list. Now we're mapping the switch list. It goes through each switch in order. And it maps the switches just as it normally would in manual mode. You see the same information. Down here there's a status bar that appears and you can see which switch is currently being mapped. You can ignore this information over here. Now it's mapping the next switch, which was the 8 port top switch. Each time it's presented a result in the web browser and I'll show those to you in a moment. Now it's going ahead and mapping the final switch. And then it's going to finish up with a final report after this switch is finished. It says it's complete. It automatically closes because this may have been launched from the command line so we don't want any dialog boxes that stay open. Now we'll go ahead and discuss the reports. And by the way, if you want to review each of these switch mappings, you can go into switch list mappings. And you see the date is today, June 24th, and we had three switches in the list. And you can see the times that they were mapped at and you can go ahead and double click on one or press that button after highlighting it to view it back in the same grid, the results grid as it normally do. So we'll close this and then we'll review the web browser results. When the switch list completes you get this analysis report. You see the starting time stamp and the time that the report was created, which effectively gives you the time that it took to map the whole switch. First you get a list of unused Ethernet ports in each switch. Right here is the 222 switch, then the 196 only has one unused port, and you get the also you, you get these uh, you get this information, you get the interface name and the uh, port name and as far as the description and interface alias. So right here you don't see much but down here on this particular switch 230 you happen to see this much information. That's why you see three things shown. The alias can be often different. That's something that the the user can actually assign to the switch. Now right here you see up or downstream directly connected devices reported by Link Larry Discovery Protocol or Cisco Discovery Protocol. And 222 shows that port 11 device that we were talking about, the uh, which happens to be a Cisco 3750 switch, and it has port 11 connected to port 9. And right here, this switch is directly connected to another switch, which happens to be a 197 switch. Now LLDP in this case is not telling us exactly which port it's connected to, but you can see which switch, which device it is connected to. And you see the, the, the port on the switch, so E8 and E2 both have something connected. And this switch has no, no information under these two columns. And right here is a report of the ports on the switch is reporting more than one MAC address, which usually indicates an up or downstream switch. Not necessarily like in the case of two, but it can. It can also mean that you have virtual machines running, or in the case of some of the brands of switches, they will often report two MAC addresses that are almost similar, but it's really the same device. So in this case, you can see that with eight, you're looking at a fan out to an up or downstream switch. Same with eight here. And with 14, we definitely know this because this is the bottom switch. This is the top switch in the, the tree, and this is a intermediate switch. Right here is a report of the VLANs. This switch has two VLANs, and these two switches only have one. And you see the VLAN name 
if there happens to be one right there. Now you can go back and look at the individual reports. This is the 230 switch, which is a 3COM4800. And it's the standard report that you always see. By the way, you can turn these reports off in global settings. You don't have to look at them. This is the top level 196 switch. And you can see, uh, like the other known switches attached, this is based on our, our database where we've entered these as switches and we've queried them as switches so we know that they're switches anyway and that's how this report is built. And it shows the virtual machines. This is a virtual box and this is a VMware machine. Your timing. And then finally we have the 222 switch, the older Pro Curve 2524. And right here you can see statistics on the the switch interfaces, spanning tree, which is self. And then it tells you the, the timing and other things down here. So you do see the intermediary reports. We asked for those, but we could shut those off just as well, and we could see the end report only, or we can even shut off the end report. So to summarize, uh, switch lists are a way to map two or more switches in a single operation. You can manually start the switch list, or you can start it from a command line execution using task schedule or something similar. Now, this is a great way for an enterprise situation to be able to, to check the switches at a particular state, like at a particular time during the day, then you can go through and look at the what has changed possibly, or those sorts of things. So it's good for the enterprise and you can use your other techniques for learning more about it. You can take those XML files and look at them in a spreadsheet or you can print them out, whatever you need to do. And you can build up your map independently using the CDP and LLDP information. So this covers switch lists and in the future we'll add more about switch lists. Mm -hmm.